I'm from Japan and here is my top 10 lesser known restaurants in Tokyo that a lot of the foreigners don't know. Make sure you watch to the end to find out the restaurants loved by the Japanese people. Buta Daigaku, I've been eating here for almost 8 years. I'm sure you'll love this one. So Buta Daigaku literally means pig university in Japanese and they are known for offering this beautiful pork bowl. Look at how beautiful this is, oh my gosh. So big and beautiful. My wifey got a small size for around 600 yen and this is the big one. Wow, I'm so excited though. I don't even know where to start. Super crispy on the outside. You can see the beautiful char. Very aromatic. And the sauce is just beautiful. Um, soy sauce, sugar-based sauce. It goes really well with this pork. Got some chili. Don't worry about the huge portion of the rice. You'll finish it because it's just so good. Cooked to perfection. But what a satisfying meal. There's not much depth to the flavor, but if you want to be full, if you want to take a nice Instagram, definitely recommend it. Welcome to Ame Yoko. Ame Yoko is Tokyo's most busy and most famous shotengai, which is a Japanese term for shopping street. It's bustling with eateries and shops, and it can be quite challenging to find a really good restaurant because this is one of the most touristy area in Japan. But don't worry, just come to this restaurant. It's the best I know in Ame Yoko. Right, that's the restaurant, Uroksa. So this restaurant focuses on seafood sold from all over Japan. They self-claim themselves for being the most value for money izakaya in Ame Yoko. I mean, Look at this oyster set. Three piece for 1,000 yen only. And these are Japanese domestic oysters. Wow. They're so fresh. Mm. That's so fresh. Oh my gosh. And this sashimi set is 1,000 yen only. I cannot believe it got all total. So fatty and it melted in my mouth. Wow. Again, incredibly fresh. So clean and pure taste. Next up, Anago sashimi for 800 yen. This is quite unique because Anago is usually cooked. Fatty and delicious. Wow, first time eating Anago raw. Wow, very chaotic, but I think it was a great deal considering the location and price. In total, I paid 3,800 yen for a beer and sake and a bunch of seafood. But the catch is that you can only dine there for 30 minutes and you can only order maximum two drinks per person. But that's why you'll never wait too long. So definitely consider if you're in this area. All right, next we came to Kanda. Kanda is one of the most ancient neighborhoods of Tokyo and it's filled with traditional and hidden restaurants. And it's so well restaurant Kanda Matsuya is my recommendation here. This restaurant has been around since 1884. It's always packed with locals but it's really worth it. Let's check it out. Now the ambience is just super traditional and it's foreigner friendly with an English menu and most tourists would just eat the soba but the locals way to eat is to start with small appetizer dishes like soba miso and yakitori. Enjoy it together with sake and finish it off with your signature duck soba. The soba has an amazing buckwheat aroma with a nice firm texture. It's definitely one of the best I've had. The duck was so tender and flavorful and try to enjoy the soba going down your throat by not biting it too much. It'll give you a new sensation. Wow, what a nice meal. Um, if the queue is too long, you can consider visiting a nearby restaurant. It's called Kanda Yabusoba. This restaurant is like walking into a traditional Japanese house. The history also goes back to 1880. And if you are into beers, there's also Mikkeler nearby. Mikkeler is one of the most popular craft beer brands from Denmark. And Mikkeler Kanda offers delicious beer and food. Highly recommended. Kanda is really full of history in hidden gym restaurants. By the way, my hotel is nearby and it's great hotel for the price so let me just show it to you and you'll be shocked at all the free things all right this is it hotel sui kanda by a best and try to guess how much it is okay This is the room. It's cozy but clean and functional. I love how it's spacious compared to other hotels and it's because everything can be stored when you're not using it. For example, this is the desk, the fridge, chair, the safe. And what's crazy is all the free stuff. Free welcome drink, free all you can drink alcohol between 5 to 7 p.m. And even a free bowl of udon from 8 to 10 p.m. And guess how much I booked this for? I only paid 268.99 Singapore dollars for three nights. That is seriously a good deal considering the location, all the free stuff you get. And I was able to get a good deal because I booked this hotel through Rakuten Travel. I love Rakuten Travel. First of all, because it's one of the biggest hotel and Rokan booking websites in Japan, the variety of accommodations 
locations is just mind-blowing. Certainly, you can find hidden gems that are not listed on other hotel booking websites. And you can even find glamping villas and more. And what's even more great is that Rockton Travel always have this kidder campaign deals going on. For example, I booked this hotel utilizing the 11-11 sale. And the Lunar New Year sale actually starts from today, uh, from January 30th to February 15th. And on top of that, there will be flash coupons up to extra 40% off. Now, these are limited coupons, so make sure you grab it before they're gone. Okay, here's a simple tip on finding great accommodations at Rockton Travel. When you're looking for hotels, simply look for the Japan Quality Accreditation. It's not just a badge, it's a symbol of exceptional service and authentic Japanese travel experience, backed by reviews from fellow travelers. So if you're interested, use my code GIP-RKT5 to get an extra 5,000 yen off on top of any ongoing promo. It's only valid until June 30th, 2024. That is a massive discount, so don't miss this opportunity. I have everything you need to know in the description box below. Hello from Shibuya. This is definitely the most visited city in whole of Japan. But as a tourist and even as a local, it can be very challenging to find a good restaurant just because it's just too touristy. But if you walk 10 to 15 minutes towards the northwest, you will reach an area called Oku Shibuya. And that's where all the hidden gems are. All right, so this is Oku Shibuya. It literally means deep Shibuya in Japanese. There are just so many cute cafes and restaurants. You wouldn't really believe this is so nearby Shibuya. But today, I want to introduce you to this hidden cute cafe serving traditional Japanese sweets and tea. All right, here it is. It's called Kantanna Yume. So this is everything I got. Um, it's pretty fun. You get to choose your own wagashi. I got the three set for 1,300 yen and the green tea from Uji Kyoto for 770 yen. Let me try this one first. This is the lemon cheese. So look at how pretty this is. I think that's a bird. Traditionally, there's no cheese inside wagashi, but they did a perfect blend of Western and Japanese. Because of the cheese, it has a slightly uh, deeper flavor. This is the pistachio yokan. Wow, this is so unique. Beautiful, thick flavor of the pistachio paste. There's also white chocolate and matcha and bean paste inside. Not too sweet too. And what I like to eat during my wagashi experience is shio kombu. This will reset your palate. Mm. Finally, the black sesame butter sand. Wow, this is so cool too. Mm. I think that's my favorite. The outside is super flaky and crispy. It has a strong flavor of the black sesame as well. And super buttery. Wow, this is delicious. Wagashi shops are nowadays very difficult to find and you can enjoy it in this super modern, cool environment with no crowd. I love it. All right, the next restaurant I'm recommending is called Tonkatsu Marushichi. This tonkatsu will blow your mind. They serve the most beautiful and most shocking tonkatsu in Japan. Be prepared to queue because this place is popular among both tourists and locals. But the queue is definitely worth it because this is going to be one of the fattest, the most Instagrammable tonkatsu you'll ever eat. I got the Tokujo tonkatsu for 2,600 yen and look at this tonkatsu. It was four centimeters in width. The quality was outstanding as well. Crisp and light batter on the outside, sweet, moist, and tender in the inside. The grease does get a bit overwhelming, but you can always order the smaller portions or add on condiments such as wasabi to cut the grease. All right, we're still eating more. The best burger I know in Tokyo, a cozy hidden cafe in Shibuya, and amazing meat cuisines as well. All right, welcome to the Mita area. This area is nearby the Tokyo Tower, and this restaurant I'm about to introduce serves the best burger I know in Tokyo. Here it is, Munch's Burger Shack. This hamburger shop is not really known among the foreigners, but it's just so delicious. I had the Kobe Jack Cheeseburger, which is the burger President Trump had before. Look at how beautiful this burger is. I took a bite and wow, the meat sauce splashed out. It was cooked to medium rare perfection. I also love the crunch from the fresh lettuce. Highly, highly recommended. The staff are all so friendly. Super, super recommended. Amazing burgers. All right, getting really dark. You don't want to miss the next one if you love yakiniku. So we are at this area called Shinsen. It's one station away from Shibuya. It's also walkable too, but man, there are just so many hidden gems around here. All right, we're here. Sambyakuya. All right, starting out with Mino and Hatsumoto. Wow, look at how beautiful these are. All beef. All right, so we're gonna start from the Mino. This is the beef stomach. Mm. Mino is known to have this amazing chew, slightly sweet. This is interesting, this is beef heart. Crunchy and fatty at the same time. Wow, that's so good. Next one's interesting. They call it the donut. 
it's actually pork esophagus. You see the hole in the middle, that's why they call it the donut. And this one cooks really quickly because it's very thin. And let's try this. Mm, extreme crisp. There's some cartilage parts and that's so crispy and it's also fatty too. This is a quite rare part and so delicious. This is a signature dish, coriander kodumu. Almost tastes like mala. Very delicious, so appetizing. The portable, very chewy and flavorful. So as you probably know, this restaurant specializes in intestines. And I know some of you are very scared, but please, 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 please try intestines. If you try the delicious ones like here, I know a lot of you will become converted, will fall in love with intestines. But don't worry, if you really cannot take intestines, they also serve red meat as well. And the karubi is... Delicious as well. Wow. In fact, one of the best coffee beans. Next up, the hormone, which is the big intestine and the cartridge. Oh, yes. Ooh, one of my favorite parts. Right, they're almost ready. Looking beautiful. Okay, this is the cartridge. Mm. The texture is just so amazing. And that's what you're supposed to expect at a good intestine restaurant. All about the texture. And this is the big intestine. Mm. That's a must order. So fatty and sweet. Overall, the quality is just so amazing. One of the best intestine shops I know in Japan. What I like about this restaurant is that it's easy to book. You can just cook online. I have the link in the description box below. Wow, that was an amazing yakiniku experience. Um, Tokyo is full with yakiniku places, but if you are looking for an authentic, super local place, definitely consider here. All right, it's finally time to introduce my top three recommendations at Tokyo. Be prepared for an ultimate sushi experience that costs very little, super authentic yakitori, and the best dipping ramen I know in whole of Japan. Welcome to Ginza, Tokyo's largest upscale shopping area. And today I wanna to take you to one of the most value for money sushi, which somehow remains undiscovered among foreigners. All right, so the restaurant is called Nishitani. You will not believe how affordable their lunch set is. I will not tell you how much it costs, you try to guess. Chawamushi is so hot. This is one of the best chawamushi I had. Starting from the prawns. So sweet. Next up, the octopus. This one already had some salt on it. So chewy and flavorful. And I love the rice. Perfectly vinegary. It crumbles the moment you bite. I'm really excited about this one, the chutoro. Wow, look at how beautiful this is. The moment I touch, look at how greasy my fingers are now. That was a heavenly bite. Shockingly fatty and sweet. So exciting too. Scan it. Everything's so good. Next up, the akami. Amazingly strong flavor of the tuna, but still tastes very clean and pure. Wow, that was just so darn good. So the sushi set comes with ama ebi, which are sweet prawns, octopus, squid, hotate, egg, tekamaki, and even chutoro, which is the medium fatty tuna. And on top of that, chawanmushi and a bowl of soup. Again, this is the cheapest set sold at Nishitani, which really feels very premium, right? But guess how much it costs. Okay, price reveal. The whole set costs 1,320 yen, which is like below 30 Singapore dollars unbelievable quality unbelievable value so that's why it became viral in japanese uh, i think it's twitter but as for now no foreigners it's such a hidden gem in ginza but make sure you come here on the weekday it's a weekday only set and it opens at 11 30 so come 30 minutes before and you should be able to join the first round and they only sell 30 sets a day i have a feeling they'll raise the price very soon because it's just getting way too popular so come before that happens Right, now we are at the Kabukicho area of Shinjuku and here I want to introduce you to one of my favorite yakitoris in Tokyo. I kind of forgot where it is. Is it here? No. Oh. Is it here? Oh. <laughs> More lost people. Found it. It's called Michi Shirube. So Michi Shirube is ranked among the top 100 yakitori in whole of Japan by the customers. All right, let's go inside. Wow, check this out. Such a hidden gem, right? It's like walking into someone's hut. So at Michi Shirube, they serve so many rare parts of the chicken. So what's cool is that we sat at level two, so my food came up in this elevator. So we got some beer and some appetizer. Self-service. Kanpai. What's also cute is that I think before COVID, you can actually order through this pipe. So there's a staff 
right below this pipe flow. You can order from this. But due to COVID, uh, I think they stopped. The staff will just come. Oh, I think my food's coming. Oh, here it is. Hi, arigatouzaimasu. Ah, my appetizer. Marinated cucumber. Mm, can't wait for my yakitori. First up, Hatsumoto Tsuki Hats. Basically, chicken heart. Daigas. Incredibly crispy, crunchy, and super juicy. Next up, obi. This is also a rare part. Basically, the Thai meat, but uh, it's total of the Thai meat. So it's supposed to be very tender and fatty. So smoky and so juicy. How do they do it? See, look at how juicy it is. So good. Next up, sesiri. This is the neck meat. So fatty, so crunchy, so tender. The next up, a super rare part. Saizuri. This is a chicken esophagus. Look at this. Wow, so juicy. This one uh, eating with the tare, the sauce. Sure. It's so chewy. The more you bite, the more amazing flavor of the chicken. The fat just oozes out. Even if you're not a fan of intestines, definitely try this one. This is so good. Not too gamey, not too weird, just so good. Next up, the Snagimo no Engawa. Snagimo is gathered, but this is Engawa of the Snagimo. Meaning they just only used the outer side of the gathered and made it into a skewer. There you go. The crispiest, the juiciest gathered ever. Oh, I love the texture. Next up, the Bitei Kotsu. This is near the chicken butt. Wow, that's a fatty backside. Sweet and fatty to the max. Next up, shin meat, another rare part. Who knew chicken shin is so good? Wow, juicy, tender, just so delicious. This one is my first time trying, it's chicken nipples. I don't know, I thought it would be more like chewy and stuff, but it's actually very tender. It's almost like chicken breast. Wow, that's so good. Next up, tsukune. This is so big. One of the biggest tsukune. So... <coughs> Are you fainting? Yeah, I was about to faint. It's not the most tender, but wow. So smoky, so chunky, so juicy. All right, next up, dakimi. This is their original, so the outside is chicken skin, inside chicken thigh. And this is gonna be my last yakitori for tonight. Cheers. Really like burst, almost pops. Amazing texture, amazing flavor. All right, right here it is. We ordered the ramen. So in Japan, we love to finish off our drinking experience with noodles usually. And this izakaya, one of the signature menus is this Toyama black ramen. So it's a black soy sauce based ramen from Toyama. And you might be wondering why Toyama? It's because the owner is from Toyama. So he wanted to recreate his favorite dishes. Looks so good, itadakimasu. <laughs> the noodles so firm, cooked to perfection in the soup beautiful flavor of the soy sauce. And the ramen sells out really quickly, so I recommend you to just order it when you get here, and you just ask the staff to bring it after your whole meal. You want to choke your ramen before it's over. Oh, what an experience. Everything was so delicious. They're just so passionate about yakitori. You can just feel it, and we ate so much, we drank so much, we only paid 9,000 yen. Super great value as well. I don't think they have an English menu, but they're very friendly, so just ask for recommendations, and they will just bring their best to you. The the ambience is very cool too. It's like stepping back in time. Highly recommended. All right, our last stop on this food tour is Kichijoji. The best tsukemen I know is located here. Kichijoji is a bit out of the way, but it's very nearby Ghibli Museum. And I think I've tried over 100 tsukemen dipping ramen, but this one I always come back to. We're here, Enji. In before opening, but there's already a small queue. So you can choose between three noodles. Definitely go for the Gokubuto Haigamen, which is a signature noodle mixed with wheat. And this is just so delicious. Really the best skimming ever. Very close in the egg. Beautiful. Eat everything in one bite. Right, so you can also change the flavor with the vinegar, the chili oil, some fish powder, chili. Just so amazing. Wow, 
That was just so good. I'm sorry I couldn't talk much in the restaurant, but first of all, the noodles. Just incredibly chewy, amazing aroma. Again, they put Japanese wheat inside, so it has this nice firm texture and it picks up all the amazing soup. So now the soup is also very special. Uh, the flavor is the typical uh, tsukemen flavor. It's made with chicken and pork bone and some seafood. And what's special about NG is that they also add their um, vegetable paste and that adds this beautiful dimension, beautiful sweetness to the soup, and it's just so darn good. Just a skimming hack, um, I think some foreigners don't know. Um, you can always add some soup after finishing your noodles. So there's a pot of soup on the table. It's usually just dashi, so it's a very subtle flavor, but if you combine it with your remaining soup, wow, it's just so delicious. NG also has two other outlets at Ikebukuro and Nakano. I never went to those two outlets, so I don't know if it's as good as this, but I'll leave the link in the description box below, just in case. Oh, I also want to introduce this super unique cafe selling a very interesting shaved ice. Right here it is, Cafe Lumiere. It's only like 10 second walk from Ramen Enji and my wife loves this cafe. All right, we're inside and just everything is just so cute about this cafe. The interior, the menu, and the shaved ice will blow your mind. Now it might look like a normal kakigori, but look at what's going to happen. Wow. It's so hot. Have you guys ever seen something like this before? This cafe specializes in cooked kakigori. So they flambe the kakigori to bring out the aroma and the flavor. Wow, oh, it's so tender. So soft and pillowy. Inside, there are actually multiple layers. I think the first layer got some uh, strawberry. So interesting because outside is hot, warm, but inside is of course very cold. And let me try to show you all the layers without destroying you. I can see the beautiful different layers. And don't forget to pour over the run because it goes so well with the kakigori. Such a cool experience. If you're visiting NG, definitely check this cafe out. Um, what's cool is that they actually have a link to book. So it's very easy to book your table even if you're a foreigner. So that was my top 10 food and restaurants I recommend in Tokyo. Honestly, every restaurant is worth a visit regardless of the ranking. If you're also visiting Osaka, I did a similar video so I have it linked around here and in the description box below. And don't forget to check out Rockton Travel. They always have some kind of deals going on and make sure you use my promo code as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good trip to Japan. Sayonara! <laughs>